Thank you. So I was going to start by saying, how many of you have used Browser Scope to write a user test? Now, how many of you have visited the CSS3 test, by chance, or RingMark, or the HTML5 test? So you've all actually used Browser Scope. One of the things that we realized after building it, and I'll tell you quickly what it is if you don't know, it's an engine for performing tests and recording medians. We wanted to get test results done in the wild by people with browsers. So you can come, for instance, and perform Steve Souter's network tests by clicking the test button and running a series of tests. At the end, it gets results, publishes them back to the home page, and you can see, OK, what's the state of browsers? And we really wanted to push browser development forward. One of the things we realized after we built the engine was that this could really be extended to other people. We built it because we were building tests that we wanted to store results for, but then we would look around and find test pages online, or we wanted to know the results of a test, and maybe someone had it in email or a spreadsheet, and maybe it was published and maybe not. So by publishing the engine, we've got a way for you to record your own tests. So that's what I want to demo today. And I will find my other tabs, which are here somewhere. OK. <laughs> OK. So we're going to do a live demo where I would, if you have a phone or a browser open or any sort of a user agent, go to this goo.gl link at the top here. Because I have data I want to collect, and I'd like to collect it from all of you and all of your browsers. So right now, I have one te three test results for Google Chrome, because I wanted to make sure it worked. And I tested it on my iPhone to make sure it would work there. So the user test module is only as good as the test that you write. So I want to show you the test that I wrote and show you how to write a user test in browser scope. So let me shrink this guy down a little. All right. So here's a user test. On the left is the code that I wrote, and on the right is the rendered page that you just saw. So I'm going to grow it out so that we can just see the code here and talk about how you write a user test. It's very simple. You start by going to Browser Scope and adding a test. So if you log into Browser Scope and go to your test page, you'll see here's the test that I wrote. It's the Velocity 2012 Lightning demo. When you add a test, it's very straightforward. You give it a name, the URL of your test, write a description for it, and at the end, you get this test key. So you copy this test key, and you go to your code, and you write a test. So let's look at this test. And here's, let me keep the goo.gl link up so you can see it. So here's my test. It's one JavaScript function that creates an object dictionary of four key values, uh, five actually. So I wanted to test, does your browser support Translate 3D, which is for doing smooth animations? So this is a test which says, is WebKit, WebKit CSS metrics in window and M11 and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, some test code that I actually found uh, in a few JavaScript libraries. Next, I wanted to see, does your browser have inner text, and does it have text content? Who remembers which browsers implemented text content and inner text? Quite hard. And in fact, I've made this mistake by coding to one of these and realizing that a browser I wasn't using it at the time didn't have it. So I wrote a test for that. I'm also very interested in the HTML5 history API. So this is a test to see if your browser supports the HTML history API in a basic way by doing feature detection to see if the history object is there in the window, and then also to see if the replace state function is available. So very simple. It constructs an object down here. This is a function to beacon the results. This function gets called by the clicking of the Run My Test button. And the Run My Test button is actually a feature of Browser Scope. You can insert it into your page. Let me see. Let me go back to where it is. It is, well, uh, here. So you embed it. There's a script tag, which will actually draw this Run My Test button and include the checkbox. Because you don't want to inadvertently make your users send data over the internet with results from your tests. Let them opt in by clicking a checkbox. But this will draw the Run My Test button on your page. And here's the function to do a callback B Run test. So up here is B Run test. That's the function we just looked at. And then the beacon happens at the end. And it's in, it does something very similar to Google Analytics. It inserts a JavaScript snippet, which will send the results to browser scope and beacon them. And then there's a little callback. You probably got an alert when you clicked the Run My Test button, which said things worked. So let's check it out. Let's see what the test table looks like now. Awesome. This is the state of browsers in the room. 
So this confirms something I suspected. So this is an interesting one, and I'll highlight it only because it's a fun fact of browsers and the history and HTML5 APIs. If you were to feature detect on the history object being present in Android 4.0.3 and assume that the history API worked, you would be mistaken. And I've just made this mistake two days ago and suffered for hours trying to figure out what went wrong, only to discover that the feature detection had failed me. And this is one way to look at it and prove it and be able to share that with other people. I could tell you my experience of debugging, but this is very clear. And as you go down, you see, OK, yeah, Firefox doesn't have this particular, five doesn't have, wow. Cool, you guys have some old browsers, and there's an IE10. <laughs> awesome. So one of the coolest things about Browserscope is seeing browsers that aren't released show up on Browserscope, because the browser vendors test on Browserscope. So thank you all for doing that. It gives us an idea of what's coming next. So this is a remarkable set of user agents. And these are all the medians. So if anybody was an outlier, it wouldn't screw up this test. You can see whenever we have more than one or two tests. And there is a sparse filter, Steve's, among Steve's favorite features, to reduce down to tests that have more than four results in this case, or at least four in this case. So these you can be very confident in. So I hope I've made it, you know, show you how to write in browser scope tests and that you will go write them and share this information in the wild. And thank you very much.